What's up? Honor Mix 26 here. I'm here to give you my video where I'm going to give you my fantasy booking for ROH Best in the World 2011. Um, I will actually be at this show um, uh, June 26th uh, from the Hammerstein Ballroom live on Go Fight Live. You can buy the show. I'll leave the link to where you can buy it in the description box. It uh, should be more than well th uh, worth your money of how much you know they're building up the show. Is you know started building up the show at Manhattan Mayhem 4, which I was at, um, and then. They, you know, it's kind of been building of what they're going to bring in for this show, and they, they they've started to say stuff about um, future uh, or p sorry, past Ring of Honor stars coming back. Um, so I, I kind of like that, and I'm going to play off of that a little bit. Um, I'm going to have my opener actually be um, a four corner survival uh, from and two people from ROH's past, uh, two guy, two R young ROH guys, putting them against two people from ROH's past. Um, I would start off the show with uh, Steve Crino and Jimmy Jacobs coming out. Jacobs uh, somehow talking to ROH officials saying, you know, give me this one shot if I win this match. Uh, put me in a four-corner survival. Instead of Steve Carino, um, you can put me on the Ring of Honor roster. And they say, fine. Uh, so it's I have Mike Bennett versus Tommaso Ciampa, since they're both already advertised for the show, against the second-ever Ring of Honor world champion, Xavier, who we haven't seen since Fifth Year Festival NYC, but I think, you know, bring if he's available, bringing him back for this show would be a very, very good idea, you know. Just just a little bit of reminisce uh, and against Jimmy Jacobs. Of course, I'd have Jimmy Jacobs win this match, probably pinning either, uh, probably pinning Xavier since he's not going to come back, and there's no really real purpose for him to be in Ring of Honor anymore, uh, but have Xavier be impressive nonetheless. And have Jacobs have a spot in the Ring of Honor roster. I think this would be a pretty uh, decent opener. You know, let every guy do their stuff, and we'll move on from that. Now, I would also want to have uh, some some involvement from the Women of Honor here on the show. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that you can't have any one of the Joshi stars who are on the Honor Take Center Stage. Sorry, the Honor Takes Center Stage pay per view um, on this card because the next Chamber tapings, I believe, are not until October. Um, so it wouldn't make sense to bring just one of them in. So I'd have a four corner survival. Of women uh, as well on the show, uh, maybe not second because it might not be good to have four corner survivals back to back. Uh, but so I'd probably put uh, Homicide versus Jay Lethal in between, but I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, for the four corner survival for women, um, I'd have Sarah Del Rey versus Mercedes Martinez. You know she's working the WSU show, which I might be going to the night before. Um, and then versus Mia Yim, who you haven't seen her in ROH action yet, but you've seen her do several things. I think putting her in a match would be very very good on the show. And then. You know, playing off that thing of women, women of honor's past, you either have Daisy Hayes or Allison Danger as the fourth wrestler. Um, if Danger can go, I'd love to see her in this match. But if not, Daisy Hayes, I think, is a great fourth participant here. Probably with Del Rey going over either Yim or Hayes. Uh, probably Hayes, because it was very evident she was not over at uh, Honor Takes Center Stage uh, Chapter 2. Even though the last thing we saw was her getting the pinfall on Matsumoto. So, uh, there's that. Then probably uh, another match I would have would be Homicide, Jay Lethal, in between the two four-corner survivals. Um, this makes sense with both of them being from TNA, as well as both of them uh, having history together with Ring of Honor's past, with Homicide being a part of the Rottweilers and, I guess, almost breaking Jay Lethal's neck uh, back in the original Manhattan Mayhem. Uh, so I think the put these two together, they could put a pretty good match on, uh, if not a good match. Uh, I really want to see what Jay Lethal can do here, considering he's been in TNA for the past however so many years, and hasn't been a Ring of Honor since, I believe, Death Before Dishonored 4. So, you know, I can see what he'd do. Maybe, hopefully, something that hasn't happened to him, like it ha like it's happened to Homicide, where, you know, he hasn't been impressive at all outside of the Honor Take Center Stage weekend in his return. So, we'll see how that goes. I, I'd probably put Lethal over, but who knows. Um, then we get to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 matches on the card, which can be anywhere from good to great to amazing. Um, one match I would have, which I've never heard anyone else talk about, is um, one match is Roderick Strong teaming up with Michael Elgin to take on the Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Now, I, I want to have Cole and O'Reilly in a match, tag team match on the show. Uh, of course, I want to have Elgin on the show as well. And Roderick Strong, you know, he was the one guy where I didn't know where to put him on this card. And, you know, I haven't seen Strong in the ring with Cole or O'Reilly ever. And I've kind of wanted to see it because Strong is, you know, of everyone on this card, he's been the longest tenured Ring of Honor member that has not left. You know, Daniels went to TNA, Cabana went to WWE, um, you know, I'm trying to think of other people on the card that I have. Uh, Xavier hasn't been around, Jacobs, um... And I'll get to one person in particular you probably think I have on this card, but was on the first ever ROH show, but then got banned 
uh, from Ring of Honor, quote, quote, banned, but it really went to TNA. Um, and I think this would be an awesome, awesome tag team match. You know, have Strong in there with Colin O'Reilly, and then Elgin, uh, I remember from his match in Manhattan Mayhem before we teamed up with Mike Mondo against Colin O'Reilly. They had very good chemistry with each other. Just Elgin throwing those guys around. It was awesome to see. Um, I probably would have Colin O'Reilly over since Elgin and Strong are not a established tag team, and Cole and O'Reilly have had to go under every team that they faced, pretty much outside of the Bravado brothers, which, you know, you can write home about. So I give them this win. I think it would be great. Then we get to the returning Loki, who's the guy I just mentioned. Uh, again, and I want I really want to put him here against El Generico. For the reason being that, you know, for his first match back from Ring of Honor, I don't want to put him against someone that we've seen him face before um, and seen him in the ring with. Uh, at least in Ring of Honor. I know that Generico and Loki had matches in PWG, like at Holy Diver Down and other shows like that. However, you've never seen this in Ring of Honor, and it's going to be completely different. And I think Generico, being a PBG, maybe talking to Lowkey, maybe at some of the shows or something like that, uh, I think is a good move to put these two together here, and they can put on an awesome match. You know, Lowkey's return to Ring of Honor. I personally have never seen Lowkey live, so I, w- I want to see him live. You know, I was going to go to the New Japan shows, but I never did, uh, based off of school. But we'll get to that later. But that's a totally different issue, actually. Um, but uh, great match between these two. I probably would put. Based off of whether Loki wants to stick around or not, generic or key over, and then I'd probably lead to a uh, yeah, maybe a homicide involvement here, where he gets to say he finally granted his third wish. I actually really like the idea from trademark. I had it kind of had it in mind before I heard him say it, but I really like that idea. Um, and then we get to the four matches, which probably everyone is going to have back to back to back to back on on their card because it makes the most sense and something that everyone wants to see. Uh, the ROH TV title: Christopher Daniels versus Cole Cabana. I really don't like having people face uh, on back-to-back shows, and I have two of the ma- two of those matches on this show. However, it makes a lot of sense because I think, you know, people think Cabana or Generico is going to be the one to take the TV title off of Christopher Daniels. Um, so with that said, you know, I think that Daniels should hold the belt until the first Sinclair TV taping, which means probably putting uh, the weaker wrestler or the the less TV title worthy, in my opinion, wrestler in the TV title match on this show in Cole Cabana. Um, and also really didn't have a spot for him. You know, I really wanted Generico versus Loki, so that meant Cabana would be challenging on this show. I would have Daniels retain and probably drop it on the first TV taping to Generico um, in Chicago on August 13th, I believe. Um, so just have Cabana do his comedy stick and have Daniels get frustrated and just play off of that a lot. Maybe have Steve Carino come out, maybe trying to form something with Cabana here. Uh, with Jimmy Jacobs, maybe tag him along, say they want to help fight the House of Truth or something like that. Um, but I, th- I think this would be a pretty good match. Um, actually, very good match. You know, these two have good chemistry together, so I'd like to see what they can do. Now comes something that I, uh, I'm a little concerned that, you know, why why do people want the ladder war on this show so bad? I, I don't get it. I just have, you know, why not a fight without honor between the Annex and Briscoes? That's exactly what I have. Um... I don't get why people are just so, oh, th- this match needs the ladder war. Why? You know, with the previous two ladder wars, they had been teasing it for months going in. You know, I don't get why th- this match needs it. Yeah, I mean, both the, th- these two teams, I think, would do excellent in the ladder war. However, this match has just been all about violence, and we haven't seen any traces of a ladder ever. You know, the, I, I saw their first two matches live of this feud. There was no trace of ladder in either of those matches. You know, it's just a brutal beatdown of the Briscoes playing down the All-Night Express. So, you know, put them in the, the, the ROH hardcore match, the fight without honor, and have the Annex finally overcome the Briscoes and set them up to challenge the world's greatest tag team coming up in the future. I think that would be an awesome match. You know, just have, have them go out and beat the crap out of each other, outdo the Chicago Street Fight, outdo the match that had an honor stage, take center stage, or in Dearborn. They just outdo themselves and go past the limit and just... Have the Annex look very strong at the end of this match. Maybe even have Rhett Titus go over Jay Briscoe. Have Rhett Titus cemented as, okay, I'm no longer anywhere near a student, and just have him win. You know, there were a lot of signs of that at Undertake Center Stage, and I'm really glad to see it. But, you know, I think this match should be the thing that makes it over go over the hill. Now with the semi-main event, I'm going to have the ROH World Tag Team title match. Uh, Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team versus the Kings of Wrestling. Uh, of course, I'd have this be the last match between these two for a while. Uh, maybe, ha- uh, you know, and, and I feel that, you know, I've seen 
before, twice on pay-per-view, and I think three te- three times overall. Just these two going at it in a regular match. So we need to switch it up a little bit. I, I don't want this card to start getting gimmick happy because that's what not Ring of Honor is not about. Um, so uh, I, I would have two out of three falls for the Kings of Wrestling versus World's Greatest Tag Team. Um, you know, it's it just it, it is a gimmick. However, it's it's a gimmick that doesn't take away from in-ring wrestling, and I think that 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 would be perfect here. You know, probably. Uh, you know, I would have the World's Greatest Tag Team retain because the Kings Wrestling really don't need the belts. So after this match, I'd have the Kings Wrestling do a little bit of the American Rules type thing and team together, team together a little bit, but kind of go in singles careers. You know, have Claudio go after whoever wins my main event of Davey versus Eddie, uh, and maybe Chris Hero on their tails as well. So who knows? Uh, but I think two out of three falls for this would be an awesome addition, and then just have them have an awesome match. Finally, the ROH World Title, Eddie Edwards versus Davey Richards. People have wanted this. I, I called this back in my Manhattan Mayhem 4 live review. I've wanted to see it since then, and it still holds true. It makes sense with what happened in Supercard of Honor. Just book this match. Everyone wants to see it. Now, the booking of this match, here's what I would personally do. I hate to take the belt off of Eddie because I really don't want to do it. However, I think Davey needs it more at this point. People are going to start getting disinterested, and you know I really don't want a Steven Generico tag title situation where they finally won it off of the age of the fall, or Tyler Black when he finally won the world title about a year after he should have. Um, I don't want that to happen again. So this is probably the last stitch ever for Davey Richards where he can win it before it starts to get like that. So I think we got to put it on uh, Davey here. I know Eddie has done an excellent job as champion, and I hate to take it off of him, but... You, know, you could play in the storyline like, okay, you beat me, but I want my rematch type thing for Eddie. Um, and then Davey, and then Davey just giving him a rematch down the line, maybe at, at some random show. Who knows? Uh, I'm sure they could book that as well. Maybe Davey turn heel. Who knows? I mean, there are, there are a ton of things that could come out of this match. There are reasons why Eddie should retain, but I think there are more why Davey should win the belt here. Um, I think this would be the fourth or fifth title change in a row to happen in New York. Uh, everyone since Aries took it off of Jerry Lynn. But who knows? Um, and, and for that reason, I actually think that Dave Richards is the right man to hold the belt, and this is probably the most important reason for the new TV show. Jerry Lynn was the right man to hold it for HDNet, their first national exposure, the most recognizable face in your company at that time. A lot of people are talking about, okay, Dave Richards is the best in the world. He's the best guy in their company. He's always putting on the best matches. You know, Brian Danielson even said in the past, Dave Richards is the best guy in the world right now. That type of guy needs to be your champion going in to the new Sinclair Broadcasting Group show. So, I feel that Davey should go over. Uh, Give me your thoughts on this card, and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.